live from Barcelona, Spain, it's theCUBE, covering Cisco Live Europe. Brought to you by Cisco and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back to theCUBE here at Cisco Live 2019 in Barcelona, Spain. I'm Stu Miniman, happy to welcome to the program a first time guest, but someone I've known for many years, Jason Edelman, who's the founder of Network to Code. Jason, great to see you and thanks for joining us. Thank, thank you for having me, Stu. All right, so Jason, let, let, let's first, for our audience, since it's your first time in the program, give us a little bit about your background and what led to you being the founder of Network to Code. Right, so my background is that of a traditional network engineer. I spent 10 plus years managing networks, deploying networks, and, and really acting in a pre-sales capacity, supporting Cisco infrastructure. And it was probably around 2012 or 13, working for a large Cisco VAR, that we had access to something called Cisco 1PK. And we kind of dove into that as the first SDK to control network devices. We have today iPhone SDKs, SDKs for Android, to program for phone apps. This is one of the first SDKs to program against a router and a switch. And you know that for me was just eye-opening. This is kind of back in 2013 or so to see what could be done to write code in Python, C, or Java against network devices. Now, when this was going on, I didn't know how to code, so kind of used that as the entrance to ramp up but that was for me like the pivot point and in like the same like six week period I had a demo of like Puppet and Ansible automated networking devices and so like, that was like the pivot point where it was like wow, realizing I've spent a career architecture and, and designing networks and realizing there's a challenge in operating networks day to day. Yeah, I mean Jason, you know, dial back. Uh, you you have some Cisco certifications in your background? Sure, yeah, CCIE. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so you know, I, I think back when this whole, you know, open flow and you know, before we even called it, you know, software defined networking, yeah. you, you were blogging about this type of stuff. Um, but as you said, you weren't, a, you know, you weren't a coder, it wasn't your background, you, you were a network guy. Um, yeah. And I think, you know, the network to code, uh, a lot of things we've been looking at career-wise, it's like, okay, does everybody need to become coders? Yeah. You know, how will the tools mature? Uh, what was, what was the, give us a little bit about that journey, is how you got into coding, and uh, yeah. y y you know, let's go from Yeah, there. it was interesting. In 2010, I started blogging open flow related. I thought it was going to change the world. You know, I saw what Nicira was doing at the time, and, and Big Switch at the time, and I just speculated and, and blogged, and, and really just, you know, envisioned this world where, networks were, were different in some ca capacity. And it took a couple years to really shed light on management and operations of networking. And yeah, I made some career shifts. And I remember going back to 1PK at the time, you know, my manager then, who is now our CEO at Network to Code, like he actually asked, well, why don't you do it? And it was just like me, me, like, Automate or program like like what do you like what do you mean? And so it's kind of like a, a moment for me to kind of like reflect on what I can do. Now I will say I don't believe every network engineer should know how to code. That was my on ramp because of you know partnership with Cisco at the time and learning one PK and programming languages. But that was sort of for me I guess what I needed as that you know kick in the butt to say you know what. I am going to do this because I do believe in the shift that's going to happen in the next couple of years, and that was where I kind of just you know jumped in, uh, you know, feet first, and and uh, now we are where we are. Yeah, no, Jason, some great points there. Uh, I, I know for myself, you know, I, I look at Cisco's gone through so much change. A year ago. Uh, when, you know, up on stage, Cisco's talking about their future is as a software company. You know, you might not even think of us as networking first, you will talk to us about software first. So that yeah. initial shift that you saw uh, back in 2010, it, it's happening, it's a different form than we might have thought originally, and it's yeah. not necessarily a product, but we're going through that shift. Um, and, and I like what you said about how not everybody needs to code, but uh, you know, it, it just, it's changing paradigms and what we need to do are different. Um, You've got some connections. We're here in the DevNet zone. Yeah. Uh, I saw at the, the US show uh, in, in Orlando last year, Network to Code had a, a small booth. There were a whole bunch of startups in that space. Tell us how you got involved in the DevNet, it really yeah. since the, the, the earliest days. Yeah, since the early days, it was really pre-DevNet. So the, the, the emergence of DevNet, and, and I've seen it grow in the past couple of years at Cisco Live. And, and for us, given what we do at Network to Code as a network automation focused uh, company, you know, we see DevNet in use 
um, by our clients, you know, by DevNet solutions and products, you know, things like mentioned yesterday on a panel, but DevNet has always on sandboxes to one of the biggest barriers we've seen with our clients is getting access to the right lab gear on getting started to automate. You know, so DevNet has these sandboxes always on to you know hit a Nexus API or Catalyst API, right? Things you know things like that. And there's really there's really you know a very good structured learning path to get started through DevNet, which you know usually where we intersect in our client engagements, it's kind of like post DevNet, you know, you kind of really showing what's possible. And then it will kind of you know get in and craft some solutions for our for our clients. Yeah, and I'd love take us inside some of your clients I I if you can. Uh, you know, or most of them are they, are they hitting the API instead of the CLI now <laughs> when they're engaging? Yeah, <laughs> it's actually a good question. Not usually talked about, but you know the reality is you know APIs are still very new, and so we actively test a lot of the newer APIs from Cisco as an example. Like iOS XE has some of the best APIs that exist around RESTConf, NETCONF, modeled from the same uh, Yang models, and great APIs. But you know the truth is that a lot of our clients, large enterprises that have been around for 20 plus years, the install base is still largely non-API enabled. So a lot of the automation that we do is definitely SSH based. And when you look at what's possible with uh, platforms, you know, if it is something like uh, custom in Python or even an Ansible off the shelf, a lot of the integrations are hidden from the user. So yeah, as long as we're able to accomplish the goal, it's the most important thing right now. And our clients' leaderships sometimes care, you know, and it's true, right? You, you want the outcome. And, you know, initially it's okay if we're not using the API, but, you know, once we do flip that switch, it does provide, you know, a bit more structure and safety for automating, but the install base is so large right now that you know to automate you have to use SSH, and like we don't believe in waiting till every device is API enabled because it'll just take a while to turn to turn that base. All right, uh, Jason. A major focus of the conference this year has been around multi-cloud. How's that impacting your business and your customers? Right. So it's in our it's in our path as a company. You know, right now there's a lot of focus around multi-cloud and data center. And you know the truth is we're doing a lot of automation in like the campus networking space, right? Automating networks, you know, getting deployed in wiring closets and firewalls and load balancers and things like that. So from our standpoint, as we start planning with our clients, um, we you know we see the, the services that we offer kind of really poured over to multi-cloud and making sure that with whatever automation is being deployed today, regardless of tool set and look at a tool chain to deploy, if it's a, a CICD pipeline for networking, be able to do that if you're managing a network in the campus, a data center network, or multi-cloud network to make sure we have a uniform looking feel to operations and, and doing that. All right, uh, so Jason, you're not only a founder of a company, you're also an author. Maybe tell us about the, I believe it's a, a, an update or is a new book uh, that, that, that recently got out. Yeah, so I'm a co-author of a book with Matt Oswald and Scott Lowe. And it's an O'Reilly book that was published last year. And, and look, I'm a, I'm a believer in education. And to really make a change uh, and change an industry, like we have to educate. And you know, I think the book, the goal was to play you know, a small part and really bringing concepts to light as a network engineer you know, by trade. You know, there's fundamental concepts that network engineers you know, should be aware of. And it you know, could be you know, basics in a lot of these. It could be Python or Jinja templating and YAML and Git and Linux for that matter. It's just kind of providing that baseline of skills as an entrance into automation. And once you have the baseline, it kind of really uncovers what's possible. So writing the book was yeah, great, you know, great opportunity. And you know, thank you to Matt and Scott for for uh, getting involved there. It really took a lot of the you know the work effort and, and collaborated with them on it. Yeah, yeah. want to get your perspective on, on on the show also. Education always a you know a, a yeah. key feature of, of what happens at the show. Uh, you know, not far from us is the Cisco Bookshop. I see people you know getting a lot of the the, the big Cisco books. But you know, I think ten years ago it was like everybody you know get my CCIE, my you know uh, you know s s all my different certifications updated here. Um, here in the DevNet zone, a lot of people really they're building stuff. They're you know building new pieces. They're they're playing in the labs and they're doing the, uh, some of these environments. What's your experience here at the show? Any, anything particular that catches your eye? 
So I do believe in education. You know, I think to, to, to do anything well, you have to be educated on it. And I've read Cisco Press books over the years, you know, probably a dozen of them, you know, for the CCIE and beyond. You know, I think when we look at what's in DevNet, when we look at, you know, what's in, in the bookstore, you know, people have to immerse their, themselves into the technology and reading books, like the learning labs that are here in the DevNet zone, the design sessions that are, that are uh, right behind us, that, you know, it's just, you know, amazing for me to have seen, you know, the, the DevNet zone grow to be what it is today and really the goal of educating the market of, of what's possible. So even from the start of Networks of Code, you know, we started as doing a lot of training because like you really can't change the, the methodology of network operations like without being aware of what's possible and it really does kind of come back to, to training. You know, some, you know, you know, whatever it is, on demand, streaming, instructor led, uh, reading a book and, uh, you know, just, you know, glad to see this happen here and, you know, a lot more to do around the industry or, you know, in this, you know, in this space around, you know, community and you know, involvement and development, but you're training a huge part of it. All right, uh, Jason, want to give you the final word. Uh, you know, love the story of, you know, network engineer, g gone entrepreneurial, out of your comfort zone, coding, uh, helping to build a business. So, uh, you know, what, T t tell us uh, what you see going forward. Yeah, so we've grown quite a bit in the past couple of years. You know, right now we're over 20 engineers strong, and you know, starting from you know essentially just one a couple of years ago was a huge transformation in, in seeing this seeing this happen. And look, I, you know, I believe in in bringing on on A players to help it make that happen. I think for us as a business, we're continuing to to grow and and you know accelerating what we do in this network automation space. But yeah, I just think you know one thought to throw out there is you know oftentimes we, we talk about lower level tools, you know Python, Git, you know YAML, a lot of these new acronyms and buzzwords for network engineers. But also the flip side is true too, as our client base uh, evolves and you know a lot of them are in the Fortune 100, so large clients. You know looking at consumption models of technology is super important, meaning. You know, is there ITSM tools deployed today, like a ServiceNow or, you know, WebEx Teams or Slack for chat integration, to really think through early on how the internal customers of automation will consume automation, because it really does us no good, Cisco, you know, Cisco vendors or clients no good if we deploy a great network automation platform and no one uses it, because it doesn't fit the culture of the brain of the organization. So it's just as we continue to grow, that's really what's top of mind uh, for us right now. All right, well, Jason, congratulations on everything uh, that you've done so far and wish you the best of luck going forward. And uh, thank you so much, of course, for, for watching. We'll have more coverage, three-day wall-to-wall here at Cisco Live 2019 in Barcelona. I'm Stu Miniman, and thanks for watching theCUBE.